This leads me to my now good friend, Judd Brewer at Yale, uh, who I'm, I try to not communicate with more than three times a day. Uh, he, he's done some very nice work here also on default mode network, which we thought was kind of an obscure topic, like who would care? But what happened was Forbes.com about a month ago picked up his work, surprisingly, and you can see the attention it's gotten. Uh, 77,000 views in a week. This is Forbes. This is not, you know, new Buddhism or anything. This is Forbes. Forbes.com, 77,000 hits, which is like 50 times the normal number of hits they get on their website for any story. So a huge hit. You can see down here at the bottom, it was really focused on decreased activity in default mode network. Astonishing the people in the program. Uh, all of us collaborating together just could not believe it got that kind of attention. And what Judd and his gang found out was now you all know what he found out, that these meditators, and to clarify, these are all Theravadins. They all do pretty, the same protocols. They all do the same meditations. These three, uh, this is metta. Uh, this is uh, mind, uh, mindfulness. And this, oh, this is concentration, and this is mindfulness. So all three of those uh, traditional Theravadan meditation techniques were used try to correlate those. They had well-matched controls for each one of the people who were actually in the study, so it's a very uh, statistically significant uh, outcome. Shut down legal prefrontal cortex, shut down uh, bilaterally posterior cingulate cortex. Same story you've all heard before. But this happens now, DMN, as well as meditating. Meditating, not meditating, same thing. Shut down, 10,000 hours, uh, three Theravadan techniques. The big surprise to me, and I think to Judd too, was that, now this is a little bit confusing, these are the controls down this side. If you cut here, this is control meditator, baseline meditation. So we're looking at, uh, just hanging out, DMN, uh, what's the control have, what's the meditator have, if you subtract those out, you can see what's differentially activated in the meditators, it's this. This is the interior singlet cortex, whose job it is is to kind of watch. It's kind of looking around like this about, you know, how's the PCC doing? Is it getting active or something? That's its job. It also up-activates this lateral prefrontal cortex. You recall we talked about this in the FARB study, this part? It up-activates that as well. So simultaneously with down-activating the PCC, we up-activate this and this, the watching center, and the control center, cognitive control center. So it looks like the brains learned how to do this to energize these two centers to watch so the PCC doesn't misbehave. Uh, the neat thing about the Yale fMRI is it's real time. There are only a couple of these on the continent. And what you can do is you can lay in the fMRI and you can actually watch your brain uh, go into and out of selfing in real time. It's about a two to four second time delay between when it happens and when you can get the signal out of the fMRI, but other than that two to four second delay, you can watch your brain real time, selfing or not selfing. This is a novice, what it looks like, blue and red, blue and red, fourth run, blue and red, blue and red. Now, what do these mean? Uh, the red means increased self-related activation. You're going into selfing. The blue means decreased self-related activation. So you're going, you can just watch in real time uh, what your brain feels like, what consciousness feels like. Uh, if you've meditated a lot, you get very sensitive to little shifts in energy. You can watch those shifts in energy going on in consciousness. And you can see how that's manifesting in this red-blue thing. The experts, the 10,000 hour guys, they get this. Whether they're meditating or not meditating, uh, straightforward, very simple, logical conclusion. Very uh, good conclusion. Now, what's my story? Now, it worked for me, because I thought, well, this is really all neat, but what about me? So, so I was not, I'm not a Theravadan. Uh, never touch the stuff. <laughs> I smoke, but don't inhale. 
Uh, I'm a, I'm a Mar Maharshi inquiry, a Rinzai Zen, a non dual Advaitist. And so they ran me in DMN, and that was my DMN. So it, it, it happens whether it's Theravadan or non Theravadan. You put in the hours, uh, the stuff does happen, it does change, you deactivate your PCC, and your, self, your narrative network shuts down. Time? Pretty close? Okay. Uh, there were two other questions I had had. I was in another study. This is for people who are persistently non-dual, self-reported. And there were three questions this guy did his PhD thesis on over the course of the last uh, two or three years. Do these enlightens about, I hate to use the E word, it doesn't mean anything. The E word is just an awful thing to say. And so uh, we we'll just call them serpents, self-reported persistent non-duals. And so it's serpents, and so do the serpents have a range of psychological development, uh, and do serpents uh, score higher in mysticism? Okay, and this was his doctoral thesis, just completed at CIS uh, this year. So what Jeffrey Martin did was look at these serpents. He took 500 serpents and cut them down 90%, and took 52 out of that pick, 36 of us, and put us through standard psychological testing. Now, these are self-reported. We could all be delusional. It's self-reported serpents. So the serpents say this, and Jeffrey cuts it to 36, gives us a standard psychological test, worst university <laughs> sentence completion test. Uh, all 36 scored five or above, not surprising because you've already called the group down a lot. Average is 7.14, two-thirds, seven to 10, only one 10. The big news is that all these serpents have a range of psychological development. They all aren't 9.35s. There's a whole range of personalities, psychology, development, whatever unrelated to whether or not they're persistently non-dual. Those are the sentences. Uh, second question was, okay, how about mysticism? There's a Hood mysticism scale. Ralph Hood was on Jeffrey Martin's doctoral committee. So this is about as good as it gets for looking at whether or not it's mystical or not. They looked at this, the serpents came out 152 average. Uh, nine, of, nine of our serpents were 160. Uh, Comparative studies, psychedelics, contemplatives, psychotics, you can see the numbers. The serpents were more mystical, and they're that way persistently. You can go one event to the hood scale and get a number. But this is like it's that way all the time for the serpents, even better than acid or mushrooms. Uh, the bottom line was a gathering of people. Uh, you couldn't tell the serpents from anybody else, mystical or not. These are the conclusions. Uh, you've clicked through these. 10,000 hours, you change your DMN, you change your narrative, uh, selfing network changes, you activate self-monitoring cognitive control centers to keep that maintained that way. You deactivate the selfing network, those two sides we saw in the Harvard study, you get always one, and you get eliminated sense of time. You just heard the work on the serpents. Um, I've got a book, don't worry, it's not in the, not in the book, bookstore. You can get it online, Amazon, eBooks, whatever you want to do. Um, there's a lot of work going on at Yale. Uh, nobody wants to fund this stuff, of course. It's not something agencies want to touch. So we've had to go to philanthropists to get money. Uh, thank goodness there are philanthropists who meditate. If you can find the philanthropists who meditate, they'll come up with some money because they're curious about it too. So we've had good success getting money to keep the Yale work going with philanthropic support. If any of you want to be in the study, send me an email. If you want to send your teacher to the study, uh, send me an email. The one good thing we've got to offer is that we have HIPAA protection or you have a protection. If you don't know HIPAA, if you're in a medical uh, procedure of any kind, the hospital cannot release any information except to you. Uh, it's very, very tightly held. There are, there are felony uh, violations if you release information. So it's about as well protected as you can get. If you want to come, teacher wants to come, your students want to come, uh, send me an email. It's PDF available. There's my uh, email address and my blog. Thank you.